What's up guys, Tim Little. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we're talking about my top baits for March bass fishing. Spring bass fishing, the warm air, the warm water, bass are moving. It is time to get out and have some epic fishing. So today we're talking about my favorite baits for fishing in the month of March. Now I'm down here in Florida, I'm out on the boat rigging, but uh, depending on where you are in the country, you guys know how it goes, right? You could be just coming off of your ice melting or you could be already post spawn. So depending on where you are, adjust these baits accordingly, but these are my top five baits that I fish right now. Now, one thing you have to understand, like I said, water's warming up, uh, the, the temps, the weather's getting better, and everything in the lake is active. You know, we kind of talked about it starting in February, now we're talking March, we're talking about you know, the full moon and post -spawn, or pre spawn and spawn. These fish are going up shallow. These fish are going up shallow, so it's all about isolated cover, grass lines, lay downs, find those areas those fish are gonna stage in as they move to the backs of the pockets to do their business and spawn. So, this is this month, next month, prime time to, to throw the big baits, either big soft baits, big glide baits, so for me, my number one bait, I'll, I'll probably break these up into two categories. My number one bait is gonna be the glide bait. Now last month it was an A-Rig. You know, I'm using it a lot to search and I still throw an A-Rig this time of year a lot. But now it's all about target casting. You know, you're looking shallow, you're finding that grass line, you're finding that lay down, that shade line, that dock piling. Now you're picking it apart with a glide bait. Now I really like the glide bait especially the big glides, you know, your eight, 10 inch glides, that's gonna pull those fish away from that cover. It's gonna show those fish. So as you cast past that, wherever those fish should be, sorry about the wind guys. As you cast past where that fish should be, twitch, twitch, give that bait a directional change and that fish is gonna come out hot, either gonna eat, hopefully eat, or show you where it is that's when you can go with the one-two punch, we'll talk about it later, but uh, some kind of slow bait like the Senko. So my number one bait is gonna be the glide bait, preferably a larger glide. Now, those of you guys that don't want uh, specific gear for the large swim baits, you can get away with a jig rod, you know, your all-purpose, like your medium, medium heavy uh, rods. Go with that six inch glide bait, that S waver, the Arashi glide, that's a great one. S waver 200 if you wanna go a little bit larger. The bait sanity, the slide swimmer. All these baits are awesome right now. This time of the year is when you should be throwing a big glide bait. Now, if you don't have confidence in a glide bait, then you can go with the soft swim bait. You know, the eight inch Huddleston Deluxe, you guys have seen heard how many double digit bass, big bass have been caught on that eight inch HUD. Both Matt and I, our PVs are caught on this bait right here. Mine's a 15, Matt's is a 17, two ridiculous big bass eat that bait right there. If you wanna change it up, get away from that vortex style tail, go with a boot tail style, go with the mag draft. You know that mega bass, that mag draft, either the six or the eight inch, these baits catch fish right now. Now you guys that wanna go after the trophy fish, those big pre-spawn females, jump up to the 10 inch baits. Either the Savage Gear, this one comes pre-rigged with the trailer hook, which is awesome. This one I, I added a custom trailer hook on it, but that is a 10 inch soft plastic swim bait. You wanna find the biggest, catch the biggest fish in your lake, throw one of these guys right here. This is the 10 inch compared to the eight inch. Those of you guys have seen the eight inch Huddleston, there is the 10 inch. Don't be afraid to throw big baits this time of the year. Again, we're talking pre-spawn, so wherever it is in, uh, you know, wherever you are in the country, kind of adjust it accordingly, but for the most part of the country, you're talking pre-spawn into spawn. So you wanna get those big females that are coming up shallow, 
finding that isolated cover and throw the big baits. Now, I talked about the glide baits. I talked about the big soft swim baits. I can't do this video without adding the Alabama rig, the A rig. So many big fish across the country, across the world have been caught on this bait right here. You know, have your dummy wires, have your, your wires with your, your jig head, your swim bait hooks on them, your baits, but an Alabama rig, you know, nothing, no lure out there mimics a school of bait fish better than the Alabama rig. You know, I've said that in multiple videos, but this guy right here is another confidence bait for me. So if I put the big bait down, if I put the soft swim bait down and I'm just trying to cover water to find where those fish should be, my number one bait is gonna be the Alabama rig. Again, I'm starting with that big glide. I'm starting with a glide. Depending on the, the fishery I'm in, if it has big fish, I'm going with the big glide. If it has, you know, five to seven pounders, I might start with the, the smaller glide and then once I catch a few, then go up to the bigger glide, see if I can get a bigger bite. But if I'm fishing a trout fed lake or if I'm fishing a, a lake that has big shiners in it, big bait fish, big uh, gizzard shad, that's when I'm going with the bigger glide bait to start trying to get those big bites. Then might slow roll that that real methodical, slow thumping tail, real realistic looking soft bait, see if I can trick them on that. And if I can't, that's when I'm going searching. I'm covering water and I'm going with the A-Rig. This time of year is awesome because like I said, the weather's warm, the fishing is usually good. You can cover a lot of water and typically you can find fish in all three stages you know, pre-spawn, spawn, and even post-spawn, depending on where you are. Uh, but again, it's, it's moving. So we talked about the big baits, we talked about the A-Rig. Now we're talking about the chatterbait. I've had so many good fish through the years on the chatterbait, obviously down here in Florida throwing that thing. This is actually the jackhammer. That's paired up with the, uh, that's the Zayco. I'll link everything down below in the video description, but you guys can get creative. I love throwing the fire cross stuff, you know, the real bright reds. You'll see this in my lipless cranks and my square bills as well. I'm going bright red craw patterns. If you wanna go natural bait fish, go with the green pumpkin shad and throw a little spunk shad on there. But a chatter bait, the reason I, I go with a chatter bait as my next bait, I love throwing a lipless, I love throwing a square bill, but now we're talking about grass coming up and to be able to fish that bait effectively through the grass is key. So you have that grass coming up. Like I said, that water's getting warm, the weather's warm, things are starting to grow. Throwing that lipless in the grass, you know, obviously ripping it is a, is a great technique, but just slow ticking the tops of the grass with a chatter bait is gonna be my next bait. So I think that's bait number three. Bait number three, I'm gonna kind of com I'm gonna kind of combine chatterbait, lipless, and square bell into one just because they kind of fish for the same depth and the same fish, just differently depending on if you have grass or not. So I'm going with that chatterbait. And be real careful with how heavy of a chatterbait you throw. You know, recently on a trip I had to downsize from a half ounce to a three-eighths ounce because that half ounce was just getting in that grass too much. I just want to tick the tops of that grass as I come through it pop it through and get those reaction bites. So if you need to go with a 3 8 ounce instead of the half, but 3 8 and half are my two favorite sizes. Again, go with your, your shad patterns and go with your bright red, your fire craw patterns. So the chatter bait, that's gonna be my next bait up. Same situation, the lipless and the square bill. I literally have these rods out here rigged. The lipless, again, going with those those craw patterns, the, the spring craw, you know, the just the reds and oranges. That's that Damiki trimmer right there, the 65. Just a, a different sound. You guys know how much we love throwing, throwing lipless cranks, right? That LV500 is a great bait to throw right now with that hopping technique. If you can find the grass line or if you can find those fish that are staging out in that like, let's say eight to to 15, eight to 15 foot depth range on a grass line or a little creek channel, something like that, do that hopping technique. Just the, just enough to feel that bait vibrate and then drop back down, let it fall. That, you will get some of the hardest jig bites you've ever had on a lipless crank. It's 
like a racetrack over here. Uh, the lipless crank. Now, if you find yourself in a different situation where the fish are in the backs of the pocket, you know, maybe we got a, a storm that came in, those fish moved up in the back, then go with that lighter, you know, that, that LV500 is a three quarter ounce bait. It's really great for that hopping. Well, it's great for a lot of techniques, but I really like it this time of the year for that hopping technique. But if I'm gonna throw a lipless crank and I'm gonna rip it through the tops of the grass, or I'm just gonna burn it above the tops of the grass, that little Demiki trimmer, that guy right there is a great bait. Again, that that uh, 13 Fishing has a good one. There's a lot of nice lipless crankbaits on the market for doing those two techniques, the cast and wind, and then the ripping through the tops of the grass. Rapala makes a great one. Again, I'll link those down below in the video description. And then a square bill. Same scenario. These fish are gonna get up shallow they're gonna wanna sun themselves, get warm, cook their egg, get their eggs ready to lay. Um, or maybe they're coming off the bed and they're gonna come out to that first little little break, little piece of structure, and that's where you can pick them apart with the square bill. Now the square bill is great because it deflects off that hard cover, that hard, you know, the rock, the the gravel, harder, you know, lay downs, wood, that sort of stuff, where you can't necessarily throw the lipless. So that's where I'm gonna go with the square bill. So my next bait up, depending on if I have grass, if they're a little bit deeper or if they're shallow, is gonna be the chatterbait, the lipless, and the square bill, okay? Now last, not last, one more. If you're getting those fish that are trying to stage up in that same depth that the chatterbait works, but you're not fishing around grass, throw some kind of small swim bait, some kind of underspin. You can go with like a, an owner flashy swimmer, rigged weedless, or a, like a 3.8 or 4.8, 4.3, something like that, size swim bait, rigged weedless on the flashy swimmer, or you can go with something with the exposed hook. You don't have to worry about getting hung up in the, hung up in the grass, snagged on something like that. Go with like the little cool baits underspin. That is just to mimic your bait fish and it is a flat out fish catcher when these other baits, the bigger baits, louder, vibrating baits don't work. Now last but not least, you know, we talked about the glide bait. We talked about the big swim baits, you know, the eight inch Huddlestons, the mag drafts, the A rigs, the chatter, we talked about all that stuff. You do need to have at least one slow presentation on the boat this time of the year. Either you're flipping or you're throwing a, a weightless, wacky rigged on light line, finesse fit, you know, fin finesse fishing. You know, this time, especially March, that pre-spawn, pre you will see fish that are just suspended just below the surface. It could be 30 or 40 feet deep, but they'll be three or four feet down, just out there sunning themselves. What I like to do to try and catch those fish, throw a weightless, wacky rig Senko. Typically not in a craw pattern. This one's actually rigged as a Nico rig, but something in like your baby bass, your shad colors, uh, you know, something that looks real natural, not very intrusive, light line, six, eight, 10 pound test, something you can just skip out there and just let that thing fall and fish for those suspended fish. That works great. But you also need something to slow down and fish those fish that are in that isolated cover. So say they, they came out and showed themselves when you threw that big glide bait next to that dock piling or lay down. Now you need something to either flip in there or skip in there. The five inch Senko or the six inch Senko is gonna be my go-to. You know, there's a lot of great stick baits on the market, but uh, the Yamamoto, the Senko is, you know, we've done videos on this in the past. This is probably the the most universal bait on the on the market. It could be rigged wacky, wacky, Texas rig, I mean shaky head, you name it. But now you have a bait that you can flip into that cover, into that area where that big bass is. Uh, you know, especially down here in Florida, that that's six inch black blue is just money. But a Senko, either five or six inch whack, rigged wacky, weightless on a Nico rig, or Texas rig like you're flipping, you need a bait that you can slow down and target cast into and around 
those key pieces of isolated cover. So hopefully that makes sense. So there it is, guys. There is my, this is all opinion, right? But there is my confidence baits. This time of the year, I'm having these rigged up. Again, I'm starting with that big swim bait or that big glide bait, depending on the fishery. Then I'm going with the A-Rig. If there's grass, I'm going with the chatter bait, the Olympus crank or the square bill, and then uh, either the underspin, depending on if those fish are suspended, and then if I really need to pick up something apart, I'm going slow and I'm going with a stick bait. My bait of choice is gonna be the Cinco. Uh, Yum Dinger makes a great stick bait uh, that's inexpensive. You know, Big Bite has a good one. Again, I'll link all of these things down below in the video description. But uh, there it is, guys, my favorite baits, top five baits for the month of March. I wanna hear your guys' opinion. I wanna hear what your guys' confidence baits are for the pre-spawn, you know, think pre-spawn. Uh, and I wanna know what you guys, down below in the comment section, I wanna know what your guys' favorite baits are this time of the year. Again, those are mine. Those are tried and true. Matt and I have caught tons of fish on all these. So much confidence, that's, that's our top five. But down below in the comment section, let us hear what your five are. I'm really curious to see and where you're located because I wanna see how it kinda changes uh, throughout the country. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next video.